Hello, hello. Happy Sunday, guys. Welcome into my studio. Hello. Hi, Virginia. Hi, Kathy and Alice and Bonnie and Cindy and Loretta and Lori. <laughs> hi, Beverly over on YouTube. So we are, hi, Kathy and Karen and hey, Linda Safranco and Peg. Um, so we're streaming on my Sandy McTeer Designs page and on YouTube. So happy to have you guys here with me today. <sighs> sunny and cloudy in Chattanooga. Well, it is 85 and sunny in middle Georgia. Sorry, I have to take a sip. And this is bad because I've had more soda this weekend than I think I've had in the last three months. And, um, but I have a massive headache. <laughs> so caffeine helps with my headache. Um, but that's probably why I have a headache is too much caffeine, right? So anyway, hello, Dawn. Hi, Lori. Can you guys hear me okay? Hi, Doris and Diane. Anywho, so busy week. How about you guys? Um, hi, Yvonne. Hi, Letitia. Cold morning in Brisbane. Aw. It is y'all's winter time, isn't it? And hot and humid in Texas. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, Linda, for letting me know. Um, oh, so in northern France, it's also sunny. Um, yes, <laughs> I put some peppermint oil. Thank you so much, Loretta, on my temples, behind my ears, on my pressure points, under my nose. Um, I've been doing my little Ricola. So... Um, but Patrick, my son is in Paris. In fact, right now, as we speak, he is at a show at the Moulin Rouge. <laughs> so he uh, messaged me yesterday um, and they were sitting at some cafe. He went to Barcelona and then on to Paris and he has many other stops um, in the next couple of weeks with his girlfriend. So um, yes, yes, yes. Had a fantastic time at my nephew. Um, graduation yesterday in Sumter. It was my baby sister's youngest, her last to graduate high school. I'm going to pop one of these in my mouth. Um, and, uh, oh my goodness, Linda, 103 in Phoenix. So crazy. That's, I like it warm, but that's warm. <laughs> All right. Hi, Carol from Ontario. Oh, yes, yes. I will say, Loretta, I, I fell off my eating well and water game this weekend. So I'm going to show you guys my cup for those that are just joining us for the first time. <laughs> so where are we at? So I'm at 3 o'clock feeling awesome. Uh, it has times on there. Um, but I try and do 64 ounces of water a day. That's a little personal stuff. But um and when I travel, you know how it is when you're in the car for four hours or more, it's hard to drink that much water. It's just easier to grab a Diet Coke when I'm at a restaurant or whatever. Anyway, long story short, we're going to push through the headache today, right? <laughs> so, anyway. Um, yes, yeah, oh, that's a good idea too, Chris. I do have some nasal spray. I don't like to use it because, you know, they say it's addictive, but... Um, they do, Patrick, yes. When I, the, the few times I've been to Paris, we've been to it, but we've not been to a show, but I've heard amazing things. So, um, what was that? Had to go to YouTube to find you, but now I see you on Facebook. <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes it's, there's a delay. So right at four, even though I hit the live button and I'm going live, it might show up a little bit slower on Facebook than it does on YouTube or vice versa. Not sure which one. So, um, Patrick, you'll have to let me know. First off, I hope you had a wonderful birthday. Um, and you'll have to let me know if you got your package yet. So, hi, Elizabeth. I hope you're having a wonderful time with your sister. Um, Donna, it might be a sinus headache. So, not sure. I, I um, Hello, Mom. It was so good to see you. So, um it's a perfect day in Meaford. Rode your scooter uptown to your used bookstore and got some books for photo reference or to tear for collages. Love to hear that, Karen. I hope you had a wonderful birthday as well. Um, <laughs> um, 
Okay, Sue, thank you so much. Saline solution is not. So, yeah, it's, um, I don't know. Just kind of woke up with a little tummy ache and a massive headache, and it's gotten progressively worse. But you know what? I thought I'm pushing through because I won't have a live with you guys um, until the last Sunday of this month. So, hi, Jeannie. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Patrick. That's great to hear you had a great birthday. And um, yes, and your package should be getting there hopefully this week. Hi, Shirley. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm not feeling real pretty today. <laughs> so I, um, yeah, <laughs> you know, when you've got the headache and the stuff going on in your face, it's kind of like, but we're going to push through. So like I said, was in South Carolina for my baby sister's youngest um, graduation yesterday from high school um, and he's off to college and let me just tell you this kid is an absolute riot we um, <laughs> he's always been very short and all of a sudden between last year when he took a senior picture and this year when he graduated we're talking he must have grown at least seven inches um, so he's tower towering over all of us at six three now, and I'm used to that because my kids, my youngest is 6'6", six, six, so I'm used to the, the height, um, but anyway. Uh, thanks, Yvonne. So I'm going to tell you about this shirt. So this is um, Artistry Today. Let me pop this up. Do I have... I put it in the description. I'm not sure if I have it on here. Um but in the description on my Facebook page, and it should be on YouTube as well, um, underneath the more um, description. But anyway, artistrytodaymag.com. It's an online publication. Um, they had their first issue in the spring, and I was honored to be asked to be a part of that. Um, with my time constraints, they allowed me to, to do a project that I had taught, but I had minimal students in it. And since it's nationwide, it's online, anybody can get it, I thought I would um, put that piece because I loved this piece. But it's my Welcome Friends White Poppies. And um, so this piece is in artistry, um, artistrytodaymag.com. I don't have the link on my thing, but I did put it in the description, okay? So, um, Oh, you're so welcome, Shirley. I'm glad you got your order. And I always love throwing freebies in there <laughs> and getting things out. So, hi, Brenda. Hi, Diane. I hope you had a wonderful birthday as well. Thank you, guys. Our youngest grandson is now having a growth spurt, right? Yes, it's just amazing how all of a sudden, my youngest was the same. Kind of short, just like my husband until a certain age. And then he just kept growing. I think he's still growing tall. Hi, Tara. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. Hi, Elena. Good to see you. Hello, Cindy. Okay, so it is 4.09. We're going to get started in about one minute because I, um, like I said, I'm going to push through this headache <laughs> um, and just play with some things today. Thank you, Denise. Um, I wanted to show you guys um, something. It was probably about five months ago, four months ago, maybe four months ago. And I shared it with my friend, a picture with my friend. And she goes, oh, our mutual friend just did something like that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Now, I took inspiration from something. So we obviously took inspiration from something. It's not my original. And I'm not what I paint today is going to be my original. But um, the idea of it so and I'll explain more when we get started um, but <laughs> but then I thought well I can't do it right now because it was like right on the heels so I waited so today I'm going to show you how to use a stencil um, as a line drawing and I've told you guys this before I tell my membership group all the time that stencils and stamps are basically line drawings or things that you can add into your pieces to create um, design, um, you know, just paint from the stamp or add it into your background to add interest. But what we're going to do today is use this stencil for our focal point, and then I'm going to embellish it. So hopefully that sounds exciting. <laughs> so 
they sometimes are tolerant. Right, Patrick? <laughs> oh, thank you for sprinkling, Deb. So, yes, if you like, comment, and share, you will be entered into the giveaways that I have. I do have giveaway winners from last live, and I'm looking for those. I have them right here. I don't have them pulled, um, but I have the names. And then also on um, Facebook, the first person that commented when we went live was Alice. And over on YouTube was Beverly. So ladies, message me. You can email me. You can private message me. You can go to my website and hit the contact button. Um, and let me know what e-packet on my website currently you'd like. Okay? And I will get that sent off to you. So... Oh, no apology necessary. Eileen, I'm glad you're here. Um, so what Patrick said was, you know, and I mean, I'm sure that all teachers recognize that. I went to um, ninth grade. I was 4'11", and when I came back to start 10th grade, I was 5'7". So in that short period of summer, I became like a totally different person. People thought I was a new student. <laughs> so... Anyway, hello, Cheryl. I cannot wait to um, hear how your trip to Grand Canyon went. So I will be there very soon. So Facebook went out on my computer. Aw. Hi, Keiko. Good to see you on. Hopefully all is well. Hi, Janet. I'm glad you caught me too, Carol. How are you? Okay, so... The three giveaways that we had, uh, that I had for last live, um, I had some laser cut um, pieces, and the winner of that is Carol Hunt, H-U-N-T. I know that looks like an A. Carol, if you go to my website, send me your mailing address, I will get those shipped off to you, okay? So I had the names, and did I pull things from the other room before I went live? No, because it's been a crazy weekend and I was out of town. <laughs> so the other was for a stencil set, and that winner um, that came up on the wheel is Pam Marion. So what I do is I go through all of YouTube, and then even after, um, if you weren't on the live, but you commented below, I take all those names, all the ones on Facebook. Again, even if you didn't watch live, but you watched the replay, I put all those names on the wheel and y'all's names popped up, okay? And then the brush set that I had and the winner of that is Marilyn Healy. So Marilyn, private message me your mailing address, although I have yours because you're in my membership group, so I'll just look it up. Um, and get that to you. So let me put those over there. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Robin. Hi, Sylvie. Good to see you guys on. All righty. Um, so, and if you missed my live, when was it? Last week? <laughs> I think it was last week. I think so. My weeks run together. How about y'all? Since 2020, I don't know what day it is. I don't know what week it is. I just know right now it's June, and it's very busy for me. So um, if you did not get to see the live from last weekend, I did, um, I kind of winged it and did this piece, and I sent out my June newsletter, and I sent the line drawing for this. So if you're not signed up for my newsletter, you can go to my website, which is right there. SandyMcTearDesigns.com, and you can sign up. The little pop-up window will come up, and you can put your email address in there, um, and I will send you a newsletter. And again, it had the line drawing for this, but then as a bonus, I put the line drawing for that, which I had drawn out first, thinking I was going to do that. Um, but you guys opted for me to wing it, and that's what I'm going to do today. So, anyway... So if you did not get that, make sure that you're signed up on my website for my newsletter. My hair is looking ragged. Hi, Anne. I can relate. I sometimes forget where I am. Oh, hey, Lori. Oh, my goodness gracious. I know you're so excited to hold that baby. Um, is it your great nephew? So um, I just saw it briefly. Oh, you're so welcome, Alice. Yeah, just let me know what your um, 
email address is and what your choice is, okay? So Yvonne said, I was 5'2 when I was 10. Now, decades later, you're 5'1. I can relate, Yvonne, because I used to think that I was very tall until my boys shot up. So, um, oh, that's awesome, Loretta. And if you guys did paint that piece, the um, echinacea, the cone flowers, share it on my page. I'd love to see a picture of it. So even if you go to the lesson that I taught it on and, and um, put your picture in, that would be awesome to see. So, all right, and I do have giveaways for this week. I have three brush sets, a faux squirrel, water lily, and black gold from my friends at Dynasty who are very generous. Um, so the thing with that is, let me go ahead and um, get into the business part of stuff, <laughs> if I will. Um, I'm going out of town. I'm teaching a seminar. I will be in Denver um, from Thursday of next week, which so I leave the 7th, and I will be gone until the 17th. I'm home for one day, and then I go to Las Vegas for a show with DecoArt, and then I will be home. So if you order anything on my website, it will be pulled. It will be set aside, ready for me to package when I get home. But your order will not go out until the last Monday of the month, okay? So that's to include regular orders of product and e-packets, unfortunately, because I personally email your e-packet out to you when you order it. So if you're going to order, but I did send you a message. Thank you, Donna. I think you're, I think you're on there, but if not, I will make sure that you're added. Um, I always live down here where oxygen is plentiful. <laughs> mm. I will make sure, Donna. And you guys also, um, you should just stay out there and say, I know, right, Loretta? But I'm driving to Denver, then driving to the Grand Canyon, then driving to Texas, to Tennessee to visit my sister, and then home. And then I'll be home one day, enough time to do laundry or to have my husband do it, which he does all the time. And, <laughs> and then I will, um, and then I'll be out in Vegas. So busy, busy, but I am home the entire month of July. Now I can't wait, but it's also a very busy month because August is just as crazy for me. So busy, busy, busy. Anyway, Hi, Susan. So, Linda's watching from Winnipeg. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that, Linda. Well, hopefully you'll like what we do today. Oh, Carol, thank you. Well, I am coming back to the Tampa area. I know I think you're in a different part of Florida, right? Um, but I will be coming back um, to the Tampa area in February of next year. So, um, February... I want to say 13 and 14, but I'm not sure. I'll get it up on my website. It is a very long drive, Tara. <laughs> very long. Uh, but I have to tell I love being in the car driving. Um, all he does, and he does my laundry too, Karen, he does. <laughs> so I'm very spoiled. I know I've said that a lot because I am. Hi, Paula from uh, Alberta, Canada. St. Albert, Alberta, Canada. Um, anyway, let me get rid of this. <laughs> Sorry. That peppermint has helped with my headache. So, um, yes. <laughs> yes, Lori, I'll be there. We'll have to do what we did last time. Um, yes, better than flying most time. You know, the thing is, I don't mind being in the car that long. Um, when I've taught at Long Island, I would drive, I would just, Split it up. I would go to DC area, Maryland, and visit my grandmother when she was alive. And then I would drive home in one day. It was 15 and a half hours. But we grew up in Southern California until I was in the, well, I had finished sixth grade. And we went to Maryland every year to visit grandparents. And we went to uh, North Carolina before that to go to baton contests because my mom taught baton across the country. So I love being in the car, I love traveling. I love seeing our beautiful country, um, but I'm also a little control freak and I have to drive. I don't like to ride. 
Um, so I will drive the whole way and I could do 15 hours in a day easily, no problem. So would love to have you come back to the Buffalo Girls. Oh, Heather, I would love that. Always love painting with you guys. I know, Teresa, I'll keep you posted. So one of the ladies in our group, uh, in my membership group, is putting it together. So, um, <laughs> thanks, Karen. Yes, I've always been spoiled. He's a sweetie. So when we would drive, sometimes we had a really nice van, sometimes we had a small car, um, but I loved it when we had our station wagon. I was just talking to my older sister yesterday when we drove back from South Carolina that um, I loved the station wagon best because, you know, you didn't have to wear seat belts in the 70s. I mean, you probably should have, but laying in the back of the station wagon and it had on the sides, it had like the little cubbies. And so I would stick my drink and I'd stick my hamburger and I'd stick my French fries from my McDonald's meal that I got. Um, and then I would look out the window and I know my mom's here and she can attest that she'd be like, Sandra, go to sleep. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm just looking out the window. So I love driving uh, um, again and seeing our beautiful country and looking forward to seeing the Grand Canyon. So anyway, Lynn, I hope to be back in Long Island too. Would love that. Always love painting with you guys. Um, and then the pandemic hit, right? <laughs> Well, Patrick, when I lived in England, um, my husband was so busy with work that I would jump in the car, did the channel, drove over to Germany to visit my parents, would go to Belgium and France, uh, Germany, Luxembourg. Um, you know, we just, I just love to travel. And sometimes for me, it's easier to do by car, especially when you consider the flight, going to the airport, the expense of a rental car, um, all that. So I like to have my wheels. So did it have the wood side on it? It did, Tara. It was kind of a yellow, um, mustard brown with the panels on the side. I loved it. Oh, Cheryl, I'm sure I will too. My, um, my husband said you have to see it at, at um, sunset. So I'm looking forward to that. And we'll take tons of pictures. And you guys know I love to share my pictures and travels with you guys. So I will definitely do that. Anyway, um, I know Marilyn. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Denise, for letting me know that. Um, I will reach out to her. I'm sorry to hear that, that someone in her family passed. Okay, it's 423, guys. Let's get started. And like I said, I'm not exactly 100% sure what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to do a background. So how about if I ask you? Do a colorful background or leave it white? <laughs> In the comments, let me know real quick. Hey, Laura. So good to see you on. So I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. What area of Texas? Kathy, I'm coming to the Houston area, the first weekend in August. And thank you for asking me that. So while I'm um, waiting for you guys to respond, let me know color, white with splatter, um, maybe a little bit of stenciling design. And then the one stencil I'm gonna show you that's gonna have um, our line drawing. Okay, let me know, let me know, let me know. But um, this, seminar that I'm teaching. All of this information is on my website. I'm going to go ahead and put it up right here. So it's in Pearland, Texas. There's the contact information. And um, they have decided right before I left for the weekend, they decided to take this to Zoom. So I'm excited about that and I'll get information up for you guys soon. Um, color, 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 <laughs> color. Color, color, color. Okay. White with splatter. <laughs> That's kind of what I was... Okay, Loretta, you're kind of you're kind of in there. Um, and what I'm talking about with some teals and yellow. So, hmm, we'll see. Okay. So, the seminar in Houston, I've got a piece of hair hanging. We're just going to pull it out. Um, and I'm doing this tote bag that has my ruby red hibiscus on it. And then the other project is that um, iris. 
And this one has a dragonfly, this one doesn't. But I'm teaching those um, that first weekend in August in Texas. Okay, so I have that. <laughs> oh, thank you, Carol. Thank you, guys. Yeah, so when I find out um, the Zoom information, I will let you guys know. I'll put it on my website, and I'll also announce it. Hopefully, by the 25th, I'll know more. Um, again, they just decided to do Zoom as well, which I'm excited about for a lot of reasons. So, it's pronounced pear. Okay. Thank you, Phyllis. Got that. All righty. White with splatter, color, 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 white. Well, I have to say color is taking over, so I think I might do a mix. What do you think? Okay, so let me move some things out of the way, mainly my keyboard, and I'm gonna come down here. And let's see this, looking a little dark, and I'll zoom in just a little. Okay, pearl land, what did I say? <laughs> um, Let's zoom in just a little bit more. Alrighty. So, I'm going to create today with a couple of stencils. So, this one is M274. Can you see what we're doing? And I'm going to use this stencil as my line drawing. Alright? But I'm going to embellish him. So, this one is M228. These are M square stencils that you can find on my website. It's uh, Moreau McTeer M squared for Tracy Moreau and I have a stencil line. You can find them on tracymoreau.net and her link is also in the description of uh, this live. All right, so I'm gonna start with this one. And we just came out with a new stencil that's gonna be up on my website soon. Um, in fact, who won the stencil set? Was it... I can't remember who won that stencil set. Anyway, this is one of the stencils that's in it. But this is M280, not on my website, but will be um, today, later today. Um, and I love all the scrolly bits on that one. So I might use it. I grabbed it just in case. Okay. So I am going to come in, I think, with some color. Let's see. I'm probably going to use a combination of media and if you're not familiar with the media line deco art has fluid acrylics amazing they're highly transparent um, highly pigmented beautiful true gorgeous colors okay so i'm probably going to use some of those and maybe even some um americana so let me think i'm going to do I think I'm going to do a little color background. Let me see what I want to do. Maybe a little bit of Dari Light Yellow. If you don't have this in the media line, you can use like Saffron Yellow. And um, thank you guys. Also, just to let you know that um, it's me, myself, and I. I do have some dear, very sweet dear friends, Chris and Molly Ann, in my comments usually we'll put links and things up so thank you ladies um, for doing that and but if you have any questions just leave them in the comments and I will get back to that um, again if you like comment share you'll be entered into the giveaways and if you um, leave any stars or you put um, any of the donations on YouTube that goes to the world central kitchen um, so the other color I just put out on my palette is quinacridone burnt orange not exactly sure where i'm going just yet but i'm just going to start putting some colors out quinacridone gold thank you karen i need my nails done before i leave to go to colorado i just don't know if i'm gonna get there <laughs> so okay and then i'm gonna go ahead and get out probably some bahama blue okay so Thank you, Alice. I love that new stencil. Yes. So Tracy and I are working on getting that out right now. All righty. So let's, let's do something a little different. I'm going to come in. So I'm working on, um, it's like a masonite board, but it is a premium gesso panel from Jack Richeson. 
and that is richesonart.com. Can you see that right there? Um, and it's already pre-gessoed, and it's just a gorgeous surface to paint on. Um, you can always take a panel, you can use canvas, whatever, and put gesso on it, and this is my go-to favorite gesso um, to use. So, hi, Anita, so good to see you on. Loving absolutely all the designs you've been coming out with, girlfriend. Okay, so I'm going to take that baby wipe. I just picked it up and threw it. <laughs> I'm gonna take that baby wipe. I know those colors are gorgeous, aren't they? So, hi Pam. And who else did I see on there? Hi Karen. Okay, so I'm gonna come in with some, and all I did was I wrapped this around my two fingers. I'm gonna wrap that around my fingers, and I'm just gonna pick up some of the, uh, maybe some of the burnt orange that you can see there on my palette. And it's, it's a little bit red, so I'm going to pick up some of that clonacridone gold. And I'm just going to kind of put some of that on here and there, but not everywhere. Again, not 100% sure what I'm going to do, but I love doing these lessons where I'm not sure. I'm just kind of winging it and going with it. <laughs> so, scary. but And then some of that burnt sienna. I think I'll pick up some of that burnt sienna. And I might end up switching and going to a brush but we'll see and pick up a little bit more of that quinacridone gold oh so rich and i'm just going i'm not really trying to cover it and make it really heavy and that's one of the reasons i wanted to use a baby wipe um i grabbed a little bit of fuzz from somewhere so we're just going to kind of and i'm just kind of moving my hand like an eight Kind of like a little crazy eight going on there. And let's turn that. I'm gonna pick up, and I'm just gonna move that just a little bit, pick up some more of that quinacridone gold, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. And we'll probably make those edges darker a little bit later. But try not to go over it too many times or you, you lose that interest. See how it's kind of um, a little molted models, just not straight lines, just kind of here and there. I'll also have a new brush up on my website. I got, let me see which this one is. I got the Three Force uh, Cat's Tongue in, and I'm waiting for the half inch Cat's Tongue um in the water lily line okay i'm gonna leave that i like the way that is there's some white there but i'm gonna leave it and let's dry it it is a baby wipe debbie it's a baby wipe <laughs> um so it works great hi marty hi gloria hi donna so i'm just going to um dry that and over on Facebook, Molly Ann put the hardboard panel link up for jackrichardson.com. Um, again, absolutely super stellar quality. So that's already dry. Again, it's a thin application with that baby wipe. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with, I think, let me see what I want to do. Either this big one or ooh. Maybe that, maybe that. And we'll take some off the edge and off the edge. And I'm gonna come in with a stencil brush. So this is a half inch um, or, oh no, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna use the 3 8 The 3 8 Stencil Pro by Dynasty because I want a smaller head on it so that I can um, do less. And then a dry paper towel. All right, so, and it's dry. I haven't wet it. I'm gonna pick up some of that Bahama Blue, wipe almost all of it off. And again, I don't want the whole thing. I just want little pieces and parts of that, what look like the honeycomb pattern without it being fully the pattern. See that? Okay, and then I'll just kind of take my hand and rub on the edges to get rid of anything that's too straight too defined. And again, loaded it up, wiped it off. Okay, oh, I like that. 
a little more faint. Okay, and then I probably will come in and do a little bit of this as well. Again, this is that M274. This one is M219, and it has three different sizes of honeycombs on it. So I'm going to do a little bit of this. And again, notice how I'm kind of moving around, jumping around. It's not just trying to get all those little hexagon shapes. It's the look of honeycomb. Oh yeah, I like that. And then maybe a little over here. Load it up, wipe it off. And so I'm just kind of going along those lines to give a little look of honeycomb. Awesome. And then you can also take that baby wipe. Like I have a little bit of a line there, so I'm just gonna kinda take that and, you know, move that around. Get rid of any hard edges. Okay. And then I am gonna come back, I think, with that baby wipe, just with my index finger. And I'm gonna take some of that quinacridone gold. Hopefully you can see that on the palette there. I just wanna darken things up just a little bit. So with a second layer, right over that blue. Kind of get that along those edges. Again, nothing real straight. And then I think I'm gonna do a wash over the whole thing to bring it all together. A wash of color really um, can help you bring a lot of pattern and colors together make them a little bit more uh, cohesive and not so separated. All right, so. Now I do think I'm gonna pick up, I hadn't planned to, but I kind of feel like I need to or want to, <laughs> so I am. Um, again, that stencil you just used would be fun on a turtle shell. Absolutely, Cindy, love that. Your heat dryer died, Jeannie. Oh my goodness, I love mine too. Um, I only have two left in stock, by the way. So I'm gonna take that index finger, pick up a little bit of the um, Diary Light Yellow because I know I'm gonna use that on that B. And let's just kind of pop that in here and there, but not everywhere. Okay, let's dry that. Let's dry that. Hi, Monty. Yes, great question, Patrick. The baby wipes are water-based. They have no perfume, no lotion to them. I use Huggies. Um, I don't know if I have a package of them. I do not. But let me look down here. I do not. <laughs> um, I need to get more, actually. But they're Huggies, no dyes, no perfumes, no fragrance, and um, no lotion. That is key. Okay. Now, I am going to do a wash over this. So I think I will take just a big brush. This is my go-to kind of base coating brush, uh, the black gold flat wash. It's in terrible shape. I know, Veronica, sorry. But I love it, and I use it all the time. So I'm gonna rinse that, get it nice and wet, and then let me think what color I wanna do a wash with. I think I'm gonna do, hmm, I think I'm gonna do Bahama Blue, but then I'm gonna wipe it back. Okay, so a lot of water. Let's get some Bahama Blue. Yeah, kinda of dusty looking. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of a wash. Cause remember, like I said, when I come back at the end, I will darken those edges and just kind of bring everything in. Give it a little bit of a vignette look. Oh, that's full on. Bahama blue right there. But then I am gonna take a dry paper towel. And again, kind of with that crazy eight motion, I'm just going to soften that look. Make it kind of dusty looking. Okay. Now let's dry that. I like that where I got it a little heavy. Um, I can come in with my baby wipe. 
take a little bit of that away and come back with that paper towel. Okay, let's dry this. Another way to get color into your background, again, using that baby wipe method, you can also stencil in kind of a smoky, um, soft, subtle background. And I did that, let me see if I have it. Oh, I have it right here. <clears throat> On that piece that I did for Artistry um, Today magazine, the background was Prussian blue, but do you see the kind of frosted white? I took a stencil brush and just came in and did a very soft, subtle, um, smoky look on the background there. So, hello, Heather Hope. I love your name. So, I'm going to do that with the stencil brush. And so, I will pick up some of that burnt sienna, load it up, swirl it around, wipe it off. And I'm gonna come in and just do a little bit of that darkening on the edges, maybe a little bit in the background. Kind of add a little bit more interest, pick up a little bit more, maybe a little bit up here. And then maybe in this corner, again, a little bit of that burnt sienna. Load it up, wipe it off. Hello, Carol. Thank you, Laura, I know. I loved having you in that class. And the pattern packet, I've had many ask. The pattern packet will be, once it's in the magazine, um, for a certain period of time, I can put the pattern packet on my website, and it will be August before I can do that, so. And a little bit more. Okay. Now, let me look at that on the screen just to see. I think I want to add a little bit more up here. And I still I feel like I need to do a little bit of a wash. So I'm going to tone it down with a little bit of asphaltum. So just a little bit of asphaltum, and again, I'll probably put it on, wipe it off, winging it. Not exactly sure where this is going, but loving it so far. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you, Tara. It's frightening sometimes to do that winging it, because, you know, I want, it to, I want it to look good, but so, okay. Yeah, that's where we're going with that. So big brush, a lot of water. You could also use some fast dry glaze medium. Um, I am currently out of the big bottle, but I have the smaller two ounce of the Josonia fast drying glaze medium. But I'm just going to um, put this on and then I don't know if you just noticed, I was going side to side, but I'm actually going to just slip slap it because I like that texture. And it might dry differently here and there instead of just being painted. All right, and then remember what I did last week? Let's see if I have it. I don't have a small one, but I'm just gonna take um, a toilet or paper towel. I almost said toilet paper roll, hello. And I'm just gonna roll it right over. Take some of that color off. And then, you know, you can just take your paper towels and use them. Those are Viva. You'll wanna do that without a patterned or you could use a paper towel that has a pattern to it. Okay, and then again, I'm just gonna kind of soften that look. So, let me show you that. I'm loving that. Um, oh, it just looks aged and love it, love it, love it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is take that stencil, and I'm not gonna do it straight, you could, but let's just give it a little bit more interest and I'm gonna do it this way. And I know I don't want this part. So I'm gonna take some blue painter's tape. 
and put that right over that honeycomb pattern. Let me just kind of eyeball that and see if it's pretty centered. And we'll put that on. Okay, so this is really kind of the focus of what I wanted to show you today, which is, I have to lift this up because I don't think it's straight. I mean, I don't think it's in the center. Um, is using your stencils or stamps as a line drawing. And I could just stencil this on and leave the B there, but what I wanna do is stencil the B on and then use the line drawing of it to continue to paint it to look a little bit more like a B and add some embellishment to it. So I'm gonna use that same stencil brush and this time I'm gonna pick up some Payne's Gray. I don't want anything too dark yet. You could even use Asphaltum. But I'll pick up some Payne's Gray. Shocker, right? <laughs> if you watch me live on that brush and then wipe it off. And then little soft circular motions to kind of get that line drawing on. The other thing you could do is you could take your pencil and go in. Um, that would be time consuming. This is so much easier. Just to kind of get that basic shape of that B on there. And I probably will come back and put some of that honeycomb here and there after I'm done. Maybe. We'll see. So, um... I must learn to have more faith. I screamed when you put the Bahama blue over the background, then you rubbed it back. <laughs> and it was absolute magic to happen before your eyes. Karen, that's the thing I have to say. Just playing, having fun, creating, and let's see what happens. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. So I do have, of course, my favorite stencil, which is the Tim Holtz Flourish. I carry this on my website because of course I love it. Um, but I still, I think I'm going to add a little bit of that because, hello, I love the look of it. I, you know, I know I used it last weekend too. I should have hidden it because <laughs> it tends to show up in a lot of my designs. But it's just, it's a fantastic stencil. So, and then we don't want to leave the center out, so we'll do a little bit of... And I'm not worried if it's on the whole thing. Just here and there, not everywhere. Okay. We just don't want that shooting out like it's a stinger. <laughs> right? Okay, now I'm going to use that B as my line drawing. So I'm going to put that to the side. Um, my stencil brush, I'll take some hand sanitizer. Put some of that out there. You can wash your stencil at the same time. But do this three or four times, rinse your brush, and then rinse it nicely with some soft like Dawn detergent or a brush cleaner. Um, and that will get it nice and clean for the next use, okay? All right, so if you're more comfortable trying to see everything, you can always take a pencil, see if I've got a pencil here. Um, and so I know that, you know, my bee's gonna go there and my wings, okay, right there, guys, if I had just transferred the outline of that B, that would be a line drawing, right? So let's come in with some color, carbon black, and I'll try and keep my palette there. I'll probably have to pick it up and move it um, and show you, but carbon black, and then I also have that Dari Light Yellow. I'm gonna take some primary yellow. Again, if you don't have the media line, you can use yellow light, bright yellow, um, an Americana. I'm gonna get some white. Oops. So we'll get some white out there. And then I'm just gonna pick up a small brush. So I was thinking use the stencils line drawing meant using a pencil. Oh yeah, <laughs> you could do the pencil, yeah, but it's so much easier to do that. Um, so this is, I don't know, it's a small filbert, but I just grabbed it. You can use a small flat, small filbert, whatever. 
uh, just a small brush because what I want to do now is start building up the layers. So I'm going to, and I'm just tapping. I'm going to kind of tap this on because I want it to be fuzzy like a bee. I'm just kind of tap that on. Okay. And then I know I'm going to have um, kind of a, a yellow section in here. And then I, I, it's a bit big on that yellow section, so I am going to pare it down a little and just kind of bring that, but curve it down and up. Again, that will help with the shape of that bee. A little bit in here. And then again, I'm just gonna tap, 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 tap. This black, lamp black, carbon black. We're gonna go over this again. I'm just gonna kind of get these sections in blocked in with color and go ahead and connect those we want this to not look like a stencil that's the the cool thing about this um, is using that stencil for your line drawing but taking away the look that it is a stencil okay so tap it up, tap it up. and it looks better if you say tap 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 while you're doing it and then a little bit down here on his little tush, which you can see, you know, I've done them where they have yellow down here, where they have black down here, um, but we're gonna do that one black. Now, bird feet, bees wing, or bees feet, all that dragonfly, ew, they kind of freak me out, but I am gonna just put them on and add very little detail to them. In fact, it might just be like that with a little bit of a highlight. So. We're not going for the um, realism. A little bit more mixed media decorative, but again, we've got that line drawing basically from the stencil. And we can put in some color where we would normally have, you know, the black for the legs. So I have a little bit of gray showing through, which I like. I'm going to leave that. And we'll see. We'll see how much I'm going to put in there. Now, because it's a stencil, there aren't lines that go like for the rest of this leg. But I'm going to improvise and just kind of put them in like you can see them through the wings because the wings are going to be transparent, right? So we do want to get those legs attached to the body. So I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> and extend that to the body area. And it looks like he's got a girdle on, like he's very thin there. And I want this bee to be nice and fat. So I'm gonna fatten it up just a little bit and bring that out. Again, using the stencil as a guideline, but not the end all be all. I'm that way with my patterns as well. Okay, let's get some areas in with white. So I rinsed my brush out. Now I'm gonna pick up some white. And I'm gonna use white first just to kind of neutralize that background before putting on the yellow. Let's come up into his head just a little bit. Because I'm also gonna put those wings, they look like they're attached to the side of his body and they're usually, they're attached up there. So we'll, um, We'll put that on later. Again, just kind of improvising. So trying to keep that dip, kind of took it away there, but when I come back in with the black, I'll put it in. So, so yes, thank you, Bonnie. It is the Tim Holtz Flourish. Um, and it is, it's just an amazing stencil that you can use for so much many of my designs <laughs> so okay so we will come here and i'm picking up some of that wet black i don't care because i just want to neutralize that background that yellow is going to be fine on gray or white Okay, 
again, doesn't matter if there's texture, love texture. All right, let's dry this. So see how easily that just came together? I rinsed it, um, and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that black. Actually, I think I'll pick up a little bit of Payne's Gray. And I'm just going to take the chisel edge of that brush and bring those lines together. Again, taking away the look of a stencil. I will bring them here later, but what I'm gonna do to embellish this, you're probably not gonna see it anyway. All right, so I'm not sure if you've seen this, but I have a butterfly stencil that has flowers on one side, um, and I've seen this done so many different ways. So again, not my original um, concept, but certainly is going to be my original design because we're winging it, not looking at anything, just taking a stencil, making a bee, and then we're gonna put some pretty flowers on it. Alrighty. So now I'll take in that white area, I think I'm gonna dry it first because there's some black that's still wet. So let's dry that with our heat tool. Thank you guys. Hi, Ann. Hi, Kay. All right. And guys, on those backgrounds, I, uh, you know, that's pretty much how I come up with all my backgrounds is I just test and play and see what happens um, and what works together and loving the way those are working together. All right, so now I am gonna come back in with that same brush, it's just a flat number two, with some white on my brush, and this time I'm gonna pick up some of that primary yellow. Okay, so white and primary yellow. And with the fluid acrylics, you don't wanna use a lot of um, water in your brush for this. I, I want it to be a little bit more opaque, that's why I have the white in there. Um, and too much water will, you still have the great pigment of these paints, but it will be harder to cover up what it is we're trying to cover up. So little white, little bit of primary yellow or um, Hansa yellow light. Again, if you're using just a regular acrylic, you can use um, bright yellow, yellow light, primary yellow. I'm just gonna do all the yellow bits. And I'm probably gonna end up doing two coats, so. Oh, Tara, I missed it because I was away, but interference is amazing. Um, I have some behind me. So I could use it. It looks amazing on dark surfaces or over a dark um, paint. And that would look amazing on those legs um, or the wings. Okay, so when you use a heat tool, you wanna make sure that your piece is not hot before you go back with more paint. And this time I'm gonna come in with a number eight with just yellow. And I've got some great texture there. So I'm just gonna use that texture put another coat of that primary yellow on. I know I'm getting into the black as well and that's okay because I'm gonna come back. We want it to look furry, fuzzy. And so we'll bring lines into each area with the yellow, with the black to achieve that, okay? And that's way in your face yellow, isn't it? <laughs> Um, so. okay. Now I know I took and made that a little bit more yellow, but I'm thinking I want to reduce that now as I come back in with more black little on the hot side. So let it sit for a second, cool down.
and I'm going to just kind of tap in here, errant little lines, and then I am going to take away a little bit of this, and I'm on the chisel edge, kind of tapping, so that I can get those lines to kind of come up into the yellow area. And then same thing down here, I'll come with the chisel edge and that just to hit, how about if I get my hand out of the way? <laughs> um, just to get a few of those little lines. We'll add a little more with the liner brush later. Get that black right in those areas and I'm gonna turn it slightly to go up on the corner since I'm getting into a smaller area. And again, kind of up into the yellow, down into the yellow, but keeping that little, almost like a slight U. And we want those connected. All right, Tay. So let's dry that. So we got a bee going on here, right? He's not looking really pretty right now. Remember, you got to go through that ugly stage before you can get to a pretty stage. Hi, Madeline. Bees are so in right now, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to come in with an angle brush, so like a 3 8 angle. I'm going to get it wet. If you're not familiar with an angle brush, it has a toe and a heel. And so I'm going to pick up some of that um, Dari Lide Yellow first and put it on the toe only and kind of work it in. And then we're going to take that on the left side of our B, yellow section. And again, I'm not worried if it gets on the black because I'm going to put more black there. But we're gonna do this with the Diary Light Yellow first. And then we'll come back in with some um, Quinacridone Gold, okay? So I do wanna put a little bit under the head. So again, the toe has the paint where it meets that black. A little bit here. Very little color. Thanks, Donna. Again, it's kind of crazy to think it started from a stencil, right? And you've got this going on. Okay, so now I'm going to rinse that out and I'm going to come back in with some of that quinacridone gold on the toe. Work that in. It might be a little on the orangey side, so I'm going to also put some asphaltum. There we go. So a little quinacridone gold, a little asphaltum. And we're just going to kind of warm up that yellow just a bit. I'm gonna do it where it meets there on the yellow, okay? So it'll kind of tone down that yellow just a little Put a little bit of that over on this side. Not much. Okay. Now I'm gonna use, um, I love how you can kind of scribble with the toe of an angle brush. So I am gonna pick up a little bit of um, black and kind of work it in. And if it migrates over, that's okay. And then I'm gonna pick up some white and then just kind of tap that on my palette. And then I think on here, I'm just going to kind of tap that around. Again, just give it a little bit of texture. Again, their feet and <laughs> legs and things like that freak me out. I don't know why. So we're just gonna 
give them a little touch of something without making them exact or hairy. This needs another little, little white. Usually I will put, um, I will put um, like bird feet and stuff, I'll put a leaf over it so that you can't see them. I don't know, I'm just weird that way. All righty. Now, let's come in with a liner brush and I'll get that wet with a little bit of black. And I'm just gonna use what's on the stencil. The thing is, if you wanted to make smaller antenna, you could always just wing it, put those on without using the stencil. But we're just gonna use the stencil as our guide. Rinse that out. Let's dry it. I agree, Molly, and that quinacridone gold and asphaltum together is just, is perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go back to that liner brush with some black, and I have a little bit of water in my brush, not much, again, because the fluid acrylics are more, um, they're thinner than regular acrylics, but I do want a little bit of moisture in there to, to get this to move. So I'm going to kind of flick that brush up here and there just to get some more um, thinner, finer, little hair-like strokes. Down into the yellow, up into the yellow. You could also do the same thing, and I think I am in a couple places. I'll bring some of that Cornacodone Gold and Asphaltum and bring some of that in. He's coming to life, right? Okay, so some Cornacodone Gold, some Asphaltum on that angle brush, excuse me, angle, hello. Um, <laughs> liner brush, both colors, water, just to make it a little inky. Just not making a huge difference, but again, just adding a little. Detail with that. All right. Now, before I do his wings, I'm gonna come in with the number four flat. I'm gonna get it nice and wet. And I wanna come over here, I don't wanna use black, I wanna use Payne's Gray. So I'll mix that on my palette, nice and wet. You can also use the fast drying glaze medium, um, a flow medium. I don't see mine here, or I would grab it and use it. And then you wanna test it on something. So I have a yellow pad here, let me just test it on there. You don't want it too um, dark. You can always build it up. But what we wanna do is, again, because I um, want this to stand up a little bit more. I can come in with paint on my brush, right? Hello. And do a little bit of a cast shadow. Too much water, not enough paint. So let's fix that with a little bit more paint to that mix. And the um, feet the legs, <laughs> the feet. Okay, just to get him to kind of stand up. Now sometimes if I feel like I do it too dark, dry paper towel, just set it and touch or use your palm, okay? Try not to go over it too many times with your brush or you will lift it. Now, hi Joyce. Thank you so much, Carrie. Ah, yeah, old wallpaper. It does look like that, doesn't it? Okay. So, 
What I want to do now is I want to do the wings, and I am going to look below me real quick just to see if I have it. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. I don't have the fast drying glaze medium, um, but you can use, I have the Josanya Flow medium. I'm going to use that. And it's just going to help move that paint a little bit. Um, and I'm going to get a, no, 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 let's see, a number 10 flat. And I'm going to get that wet with that flow medium. Again, you can use water, um, the fast drying glaze, a little bit of white. I want it to be transparent, so that's why I want something to thin it out and help it move. And if you're unsure, you can always paint it on something, see how opaque it is. But I want to do a wash pretty much of white over these wings. Pearl, um, like white pearl metallics that Decorate has, or even that, um, what you call it, the white frost metallic luster would be beautiful. So I'm just going to bring that up onto the body just a little bit. You can use some of that medium to thin it out. We're going to have stuff over those where they connect but at least it doesn't look like it just attaches to the side of his body, right? So, get some more. Yes, Bonnie, that's kind of like translucent white. So in the media line, there is a translucent white, definitely. The thing with using a medium to thin your paint um, versus water is when you use too much water, it breaks down the properties of your paint. And so staying consistent with, you know, the adhesion of a paint, um, the light fastness, which means how it's going to react over time. Is it going to fade? Um, especially if it's a piece that you have where there's a lot of light hitting it. Um, so I go back and forth with using the mediums and the water. It just depends on the ratio and how much you're going to thin it out. And to be honest, a lot of times it's just me being lazy, not picking up the medium when I should or um, adjusting how much water I use so that I can build up thin layers with water and paint versus using a medium. And some don't have access to the medium, which is um, also aggravating sometimes, I know, so that'll give you an option, okay? Okay, so let's leave that. I'm going to dry it. All right, Tay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wing it even more, okay? So let's zoom in just a little bit. Um, I want to do a little dry brushing, and then I'm going to embellish him. So my go-to dry brush brushes are the Dynasty Mezzaluna. It's a mix of like a soft and hard blend um, bristle. And so I'm going to load it up. I use it very much like I do a stencil brush. Load it up. Take your paper towel. And let's get that over here. Hi, Susan. See you later. I would use a little glitter. Oh, absolutely. Glitter makes everything better, doesn't it? <laughs> Hello. Did I just do that? I just did that. So, and then I just spit on my finger to get rid of it. Hello. That obviously had white paint on it. So, what I'm going to do now is do a little dry brushing. And so, since he's kind of at this angle, I'll highlight him a little bit on that side, on the black, on the white, on the black, and I'm just going to kind of go down that line. I'll fix that up that I messed up, just to give him a nice little glow. It's easier to build that up than to try and do it all at one time. So, while that's setting for a second, I'll come in with that black. Fix up what I messed up. Again, that 
B stencil M228 you can get it on my website on Tracy Moreau's website and the links are in the uh, description and then also I think Chris and Molly Ann put those in the um, thing for me all right let's get the yellow back cover up some of that that I did all righty now I'm gonna use I'm not a filbert fan <laughs> if you paint with me if you watch me i'm i like flat brushes so you certainly could use a filbert but i they leave the exact same size petal so i like to use um, a flat brush because i can make a point i can make a corner i can make a daisy stroke which is exactly what i'm going to do okay so i'm going to put out on my palette a little bit of quinacridone magenta Oh, I love to hear that, Joyce, that you used them for the snow. They're perfect for snow, and um, those mezzaluna brushes are amazing. Fantastic clouds you can make with them. Um, okay, so with that flat brush, I'm going to pick up some of that quinacridone magenta, and again, I'm just going to kind of wing it and put in maybe a little bit of color. They're going to be um, very loose. In fact, I'm gonna pick up some Payne's Gray with that. So I just picked up a little bit of Payne's Gray. Now, Payne's Gray and Quinacridone Magenta make Quinacridone Violet pretty close to the same color. So right now he looks he's, like he's got a disease, but we're gonna make him pretty. So, and you might've seen this, like I said, the bees with flowers on it or a butterfly with flowers in its wings. Okay, so let's let this set up for just a minute. And then I'm going to, um, I said that and then I want to change it. They're too dark. Add a little bit more quinacridone magenta. I'm going to dry it. Yes, mezzaluna for snow is amazing. I think I did that on my video with the um, winter scene that's on my YouTube channel. Okay, and then let's come back in with that flat brush. Thank you, Brenda. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of Payne's Gray. And I'm going to, let's see where I want these. I'm going to just do little lines now let me show you what i'm doing on my hand i'm doing touch 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 and that brush i think is a little too big but what look like daisy petals okay i am gonna do i'm gonna switch to a zero rigger because that'll go flat but not too big and i can always make it a little bit thinner with that um with that size brush and the reason i'm going Payne's gray first is because um, it's going to be my automatic shadow for my daisies. Okay, so we'll put, I'm not sure where they're going to all go, but we're going to play around and have fun. Can't really see it on that one, but I know it's there. And then maybe one there. We'll have some leaves and greenery, but very impressionistic, loose looking daisies and leaves. Okay. And then I think I'll have them go maybe down this wing just a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do the one this way. So I'm gonna turn it because I want those strokes to go down. And then I want a couple on his body. So I'm gonna put maybe there, maybe on his foot, his foot, hello. Maybe on his leg. Let me see if I wanna put it anywhere else. I think I wanna come out just a little, but not overdo it. Um, there. 
and then maybe on this wing, I'll put it going down onto that leg. All righty. Thank you, Molly Ann. I appreciate that. Let's dry this. Right, Anne Berlain, the fly, that movie was freaky. <laughs> I had a spider on me yesterday, freaked me out. It was a green spider, I've never seen it, but it was on my arm and I could not itch my arm enough. Even though it was off, I still just kept itching it. Um, okay, so on the roses, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to that thin liner brush. I'm gonna pick up some of the quinacridone magenta and some white, and I'm going to give those a very loose, impressionistic look of a rose. So let me zoom in a little bit closer. Okay, so a little magenta, a little white, and I'm just going to little line in the center, give it the look of a rose. Little squiggly lines. Okay, let's make it look like they're roses. And then I'm gonna come back to that rigger and I do wanna get some more white paint that's clean. There we go. And back to that rigger and I'm going to do, make sure there's not a lot of water in there. And I'm not trying to cover up all of the Payne's gray lines. Okay, so if I leave some Great, it's gonna give me an automatic little shadow for my daisy, but I'm just pulling little strokes, like a little curved line for my daisies. Again, the look of, um, and I do want to turn that. Remember, I turn it to get a little bit more of a um, direction. So I know I have one there, and I have one over here that's upside down. And then I had that one's upright. I have this one. A little bit more white. And when you pop that little center in there, that little green and yellow center, it's gonna look like a daisy. Um, and we'll tie it in with the leaves and everything. I got a little misshaped. Let's go here, see where else we need them. Put a leaf there. Okay, let me look at that real quick and see. I think I wanna. So see how some are gray, some are a little bit more white and we'll make those more white in a minute. So the first layer of flowers look like a hot mess, <laughs> all right? <laughs> you know, I always say that, you're gonna look like a hot mess till you start adding the layers. Okay, so before we add any details to those daisies, I am gonna come in with a little bit of paint. So I think I'll use, um, let's see, maybe, do I wanna use media? I have plantation pine. Oh, I have some lush green. I think I might use a combination. Kinda wanna keep it a little bit on the lighter side. And I can always use the um, paints gray to darken it if I want to. Hello, let's get that off. There we go but I'm gonna be cheap and <laughs> put it on my palette. Okay, and then a small flat brush, or again, an angle, or um, a filbert, whatever you're more comfortable. So a little bit of the lush green is what I put out, 
and I'm going to put out a little bit of matcha green, which needs to be shook, shaken. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to put out a little bit of, oh, I'm going to take a touch of Payne's Gray to that. I do want it to be a little bit darker. Touch of Payne's Gray, a little bit of Lush Green. And basic shape of a leaf. Touch, little twist. Touch, twist, touch, twist. Kind of like a little small stroke. Little dab to look like greenery. Maybe even a little stem for these that hang a little bit lower. So I'm going to start in dark and then I'll come back with a little bit of a highlight. If you make them some look like real leaves, you know, with a point and everything, it's going to make the others look like they belong. It needs a daisy or something right there. I didn't want to add too much pink to it. I kind of wanted to stay within the kind of that earthy color, so... Alrighty, so let's go off the wing. A little point. Okay, let's dry that. I'm just a playing. <laughs> shake, shake, shake your booty. I heard that song yesterday on the way home. <laughs> Joyce. Well, thank you, Molly Ann. I can't say that it is my um, original. I mean, it's not my. I've seen it done before. Um, with a bunch of different flowers, daisies, roses, hydrangeas, um, lots of little touches and flowers and stuff. So, okay, I'm going to come back now with a little bit of that matcha green and maybe even a little bit of white on a brush. And I don't want much, but I do want to, you know, kind of, oh, too much white, Sandy. Kind of highlight. So I'm not even highlighting like I normally would because this is very... Loose and impressionistic. The look of, the hint of, the color of is going to give the illusion and appearance that those are leaves without having to sit there and base coat, highlight, and shade. Okay? So I'm trying to keep my hand out of it. So matcha, I backed off the white just a little bit. Kind of dab. So it does need, I think it needs a daisy right there. Maybe not even a full one. Okay, and then I'll just use that same brush since it's in my hand, come back and brighten up some of these daisy petals. So again, guys, don't forget to like, comment, share. That's what gets you um, entered into the giveaway drawings. And to be honest with you, it helps my business, and I greatly appreciate that. So. Let me get those front ones. All right. So let's dry this. Oh, Joyce, yes. Such a sad situation, isn't it, with the Judds? That was my sister's first concert she said she went to. I'm seeing there's like a, a really dark black spot there because remember I had to come in and fix my boo-boo. So I'm going to come back in with some white. And I will add in a little bit brighter highlights. All right there to get rid of that. There we go, just to give them a nice little glow, a little shine. Okay. 
centers. The centers, I want those to pop, like be nice and bright. So I'm going to use some sour apple. Uh, shake it up. Shake, shake, shake. So shake that up. And I'm just going to use my um, rigger. And let's see, not going to be bright enough, so I'm going to put a little matcha green with that. There we go. And I'm just going to pop that in the centers of each of these daisies. Just a tiny little dot. Okay. And then I can also take that same coloring, and I can just do tiny little dots around the greenery, almost like this little falling greenery, different color. Sour apple, matcha green. something something right in here a little more greenery oh I forgot one right there a little center on that one center 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 I know my sweet dear friend Sue Potts will find it if I did not put a center in right <laughs> which I can am notorious for all right so I am going to come in with that same um, rigor get some white on my brush and I want to do a little bit of a Highlight on that wing. Use your finger to. And then I'm going to wipe a lot of it off. Come in and give myself a little bit brighter highlight where I dry brushed. So a lot of times I'll do that. I'll dry brush and then come back in with the same color and dab it on. So you just get that glow, like that light's just hitting right there. Right, and I'll probably just swipe a little on his antenna. Okay, let me back out just a little, because oftentimes up close, it's just a hot mess. Okay, so backed out a little. Oh, I'm liking that. How about you guys? First live of yours that I found. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much, Melissa. I hope you'll be back. Hope you'll be back. Okay. So what I want to do is I did print off, and I wasn't sure if I was going to use it, but I'm kind of feeling like maybe now I should. Um, but I printed off a little saying. I thought that'd be cute. So I'm going to tear that. Let's move my palette just a little bit out of the way. Um, I think before I do that, I want to splatter. Nope, we'll splatter later. Okay, so when you have uh, paper, I printed mine off um, on my laser printer. I also have an inkjet that uses a different kind of um, ink dye. My sweet friend Chris Avola found out what it was and why it didn't bleed, but mine doesn't bleed when I print on my, um, on my inkjet. So I think think I'm going to, I think I'm going to separate this, so I might need both, but you could use whatever. You could use a stamp. You could use, you know, I just printed this off Pick Monkey. you know, whatever font. If you've got a stencil that says a cute little saying, and I have some amazing ones coming out for the fall, um, new little stencils and there's some B sayings in there. Okay. So that's a little on the big side, but if you get it wet along the edge, you can tear it. And it's important when you do that, I'll show you again as I tear it. Um, and like I said, I think I'm going to separate that. Let me pull this over first and show you. So I put my thumb over the letter or word and tear it. So with it being wet, if it's not tearing easily, it needs to be wetter. But if I just tear it and my fingers over here, it could go down and take, you know, half that word so or letter off. So I will hold it and pull it. You could cut it and make it straight, but I like this very torn paper look. Let's see if I'm going to need 
to separate them, I need a little bit more space in here, but I might take the other and separate it. Let's see where I wanna put this. See, I'm thinking about putting B and then creative down here. Since, well, you can't see that. How about if I zoom out, Sandy? Hello. Okay. Um, you could put it there, but I'm kind of thinking be creative. Separate or together? You guys tell me in the comments. What do you think? Separate or together? Separate word, together word. Separate or together. I'm just going to wait. Let you guys tell me in the comments what you think. Together. Together. Separate. <laughs> Separate. Together. Separate, you guys. All right. Looks like we're going to have a even split. So what I'm going to do is I think I am going to separate it um, because what I would have done is I probably would have put the B a little bit more center and to the left higher and then put this down here. So what I think I might do is I'm going to do it separate and then let you guys see. And then we'll go from there and splatter and finish up. Um, see how that's not tearing? It's because it's not wet enough. So, wet that paper. And it doesn't matter, again, if you do it on an inkjet printer. And if you don't have an inkjet printer, you can go to an office supply store and they'll, you know, print something out for you. Or, again, use stamps, print it off, use transfer paper and transfer the letters on. And use paint or um, a marker that won't bleed. Okay, so I think we'll put B and then down here get that nice and wet and I want to get as close to that E as I can just to leave a little bit more space for that C like that. Okay, so that's separated, and I think it is going to, that's going to look best. So I want to use some matte medium. Now, you can do, you can print that on um, tissue paper, so it's more transparent, rice paper. Since it's on white paper, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Um, you also have another cool option, and, and that's to take your paper and run it along like a stays a, a stays on ink pad. Okay, you could do that with um, asphaltum. You can do that with whatever paint color you wanted to, but I like to do it with the stays on, just quicker. Okay, so with it, without it. Okay. Um, I think I like it with it, so I'm going to go ahead and do this one as well. And if you don't have stays on ink, you can do the same thing with paint. Okay, let's get that. Corner's quite wet, so I don't know if it's going to take any ink until it's dry. A little. Um, a nice flat brush. So let's get, I don't know what that one is, quarter inch angle. And generous with your matte medium. Lay it down. You can use a decoupage medium as well. Put that over. It's not going to hurt it if you go over your, your B unless it's wet. And then we'll put this one down here. Again, you just want to make sure everything has that matte medium. It doesn't have to be dripping wet, Sandy. Just cover the space and then 
and leave a little bit more of that corner. Make sure it's straight, matte medium over the top. And then let's dry it. So, get my heat tool. Make sure you put your lid back on your matte medium. Yes, Chris, I see that where, you know, where that's wet and a little bit more could come off that B, a little bit more could come off the top of creative, but I'm going to show you how you can take away that white anyway. And we're going to do that with our background color. Just make it look like it's more a part of our design. You can also use decorative scissors to cut that. That would look cute. And you do want to make sure that the matte medium is completely dry. If you go to put paint over that paper and it's not, um, it just makes a mess. So, alrighty. So back to that big brush and my palette. Let me put that stays on ink. I'm going to pick up some of that. We had a little. Well, that's dry. <laughs> that's how um, hot it is in my studio right now. A um, little bit of quinacridone gold. We had some of that burnt sienna. So I'm gonna start with the burnt sienna just because it's the acrylic, it's not as heavily pigmented. And put some of that on. Try and keep the colors consistent with what's around. Like in that corner, I do have that. Um, Burnt Sienna. Okay. So again, and then let's tone that down, or let's dry that, and then we're gonna tone it down with some Asphaltum. Okay. And then coming in with Asphaltum, water in my brush nice and thin and again kind of start along that bottom maybe where it's a little bit darker and then let's dry that take a little bit of that away and then <laughs> and then when I think I'm done and I'm not, um, I am gonna come back and tie that in a little bit more with that stencil. So I'm gonna use the Tim Holtz Flourish and what did I have, Payne's Gray. So I'll load that stencil brush up. Oh, I think that's black. So we wanna make sure we get almost all that off. and come in with maybe a little bit stenciled on that paper. So see how that just kind of tied that in to the design instead of it just being on top. Love that look. Let's do Okay. And then up here definitely for that area where it's just a little bit too much paper okay so that kind of ties that in as well um you can add anything else you want a bit more of that uh let me look splatters the last thing and on the wings if you wanted to come in and add a little bit more you know lines I don't know if I do, so I'm not going to. But you can always come in and add, you know, smaller little vein lines, things like that. What I like to do with my splatter is colors I've used in my design splattered into the background. So I'm going to take that big brush, load up with some of that quinacridone gold, and very wet brush. We can splatter some here and there, but not everywhere. And then rinse your brush out really well and work quick. 
and you can take it off here and there. So like if there's an errant little dot by itself, I'll take that off, or if I don't want it on the wings. I do want it in the design of the flowers, so I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, and then let it sit for a minute. I'm gonna let it sit, and then I'm gonna come in with a dry paper towel and just lightly touch it. And that's gonna give it a stained splatter look. Again, if you watch me on my lives, or if you're in my membership group, I do this all the time. So again, see how it softens the splatter so it's not heavy and strong um, in your face. And I did say I was gonna use that interference, so I'm gonna show you that, um, Tara, just a minute. Okay, and then the other is I'll use that um, Payne's Gray. Really work that into the brush. And again, I kind of keep it in the same area. That's a little on the heavy side, so that toning it down is really gonna help. Rinse that brush really well. Get it off where you don't want it. See, I like it clustered, but I don't like it just like a dot there. So I'll wipe those away. Dry paper towel. Touch. Touch. Touch and soften that. Oh yeah, loving that. Okay, I do want a little bit of splatter there. So I'm gonna come in, I think, with um, Bahama Blue. There we go. Get a little Bahama Blue, work that in. Lots of water. And then a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. Okay, again, rinse. Take off any you don't want. It, dry paper towel, soften the look. If you do it too soon or if it's really, really watery and you press too hard, it just lifts everything. So give it a minute to kind of set up, but not too long so that it dries, okay? All right, now the interference that Tara had mentioned. Um, interference is, uh, it's like a color, um, it just, changes depending on how you look at it and how the light hits it. So it comes out milky and creamy, doesn't look like much until you put it on something. And again, typically something that's dark will show this um, a little bit better. So I'm gonna put a little bit on the legs, just very little. And then I'm gonna turn it. I don't know unless it's dry if you can see it, but there's a little bit of turquoise color in that interference. Let me put a little bit on the black parts. Okay, and then let me dry that and see if it shows up. It might not totally, but. Okay, let's get. <clears throat> A black card so I can show you what I'm talking about. Huh, do I have black? I do, and funny enough, it has one of my lessons that I did, so I'm just gonna put it right here. That interference. So see that turquoise? Let me turn it. So. When the light hits it, you just get a really pretty iridescence um, to your piece. That would look really pretty on the daisies, um, but I'm not gonna put it on there and I'm not gonna put it on the wings either. But let's put a little more white highlight on the wings, on the head. So no line drawing, guys, right? And look at, you can do it right from your stencil. So, you know, whatever stencil, butterfly, bee, dragonfly, and create from that. So, would the interference really show off, show off the wings? Um, you could see it when it dries, but you'd have to turn it, or depending on how the light would hit it. 
Um, there's turquoise, there's green, there's magenta. Um, it looks beautiful like on, let me see if I have it here. I do not. Um, like a ruby-throated um, hummingbird. Looks pretty. So again, let me kind of turn that. Oh, right there, you can see it a little bit on the wing. Right there, where I just put it. Okay, so, but that turquoise, you know, on that greenery, anywhere that it's dark, it's going to show up better for you. All right, so the stencil on that B, Cheryl, is M228, um, and the bigger honeycomb that I used was M274, and then the other one has three different honeycombs, um, and that is M219. So, um, and then like I said, this one that I just, um, Tracy and I just added to our M square line, we're getting that out soon, that one's M280, but it's not on my website yet, it will be later today. Okay, so let me come back up here, looking like a, <laughs> a hot mess. I have to tell you guys, do you have a go-to site for lettering? Um, Alice, <laughs> Lettering can be tricky. Um, again, Tracy Moreau does amazing lettering. She shows you how to paint it in with a rigger. Um, you know, go to YouTube and look it up. There are a couple of people that have membership groups that do lettering. Um, and I have to tell you, one of the best ways to do it, like if you like the font on this, print it out on your computer, put a piece of um, transparency or tissue or transfer paper, not transfer paper, what is that? Um, tracing paper and sit there and go over it. It's all about muscle memory. The more you do it, the more it will just become second nature for you. So anyway, I think that's a sweet little piece, don't you? So anyway, okay guys, I'm gonna look real quick. How's your headache, Tara? My headache is fine. <laughs> I knew it would be. Um, and that's why I didn't want to cancel. I just knew I needed to push through it. So still a little painful, but um, anyway, it'll go away. I just need to keep pounding my water. So, um, so yes, she did, Cheryl. Yeah, there are a lot of different places you can go for lettering. Um, Elizabeth Stoll, like she said, just started a membership group. Um, print it off, go over it, take your pen, take your brush with paint and just do it. The more you do it, the more muscle memory you create um, in your wrist, in your hand, and also in your mind. You see it differently. So anyway, alrighty guys. Um, what I was laughing about, what I was gonna say is all the pictures from yesterday I posted from graduation, I look like a sweaty hot mess because it was hot. And when I get hot and my hair starts to get a little frizzy, Whereas my older sister and my younger sister look like a million bucks. They didn't sweat at all. So <laughs> anyway, yes, Pick Monkey is a website. I don't know why it hit that comment, but yes, Donna, pickmonkey.com. It's what I use for a lot of my photo editing programs, all the ads, the flyers, things like that. I use um, Pick Monkey. So anyway, thank you, Nelda. Thank you, Bonnie. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Shirley. Thanks, Cindy. Okay, guys, I could go through the list and we'll be here for another couple hours, right? But um, I hope you enjoyed that. Again, share, like, comment, share it with your friends. If you share it in a group, make sure you're allowed to. And I will be back on the 25th of the month for another live. Um, and if you're looking for some inspiration, go to my YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button. There are tons of videos over there to watch. And um, my membership group, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. All right, talk to y'all later. Bye.